Thank you for watching my video once again. My name is Mr. Charles Wenike. In this video tutorial, we are starting from world origin of dielectric. I remember that I, I told you that uh, in the next video, we will discuss on electric, dielectric constant for sure. After this, after this uh, this few minutes, I will, we will also discuss on dielectric constant, which is necessary as well as a uh, compulsory. So in that case, um, I start from this origin of um, dielectric is just because for you to understand what dielectric means. So in that case, let's start from dielectric. You can, you can, it's obvious that the way I wrote it here is different. So in that case, it is called dielectric because it permits the passage of the lines of force of an electrostatic field but does not but does not conduct current it it is called dielectric because it permits the passage of lines of force of an electrostatic field but does not conduct the current what do you mean by what do i mean by that it means that in Anything dielectric material or whatever thing that is called dielectric material, it means that it does not conduct current. What it mostly conducts is voltage. This electrostatic force it represents that is another word of using to present a voltage. So in that case, it only permits voltage. It does not conduct current remember what i told you about difference between current and voltage voltage pushes current why current current cannot push voltage it means that voltage can move without current but current cannot move without voltage so in this case the only thing that dielectric does it it permits electrostatic field which is voltage but it doesn't conduct current. That is to show you that current might or could be there, but it won't permit it to pass. It only permits a, a voltage to pass through it. So in that case, we go, I will give you one or two definition of it. If you, if you don't understand the number one, you can use number two to understand it. So in that case, here I said a substances or medium that can sustain a static electric field within it. You see that a substances or a medium that can sustain a, a static electric field within it, which means that any substances that can sustain a static electric field within it, it is called um, a dielectric material. Which means that those that are that are a specific substances or material that can sustain a static electric field. Not all of them that can sustain it is only few, and those few are called dielectric material. And in that case, I now say, or a substance's body of very low electrical conductivity, which could be insulator. If you remember, insulator is is a substance that that it con that is the the conductivity in terms of in terms of uh, static electric field is very 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 slow or low. So in that case, what I'm trying to explain here is this: a substance or a medium that can sustain a static electric field within it, it is called a dielectric. That is the simple definition of dielectric, and that is number one of it. So you can also see the definition of two. Now, the second definition is a material as rubber, glass, etc., or a medium as a vacuum, 
gas, etc., that does not conduct electricity. What do you mean by that? A material as rubber, glasses, etc., or a medium as a vacuum, gas, etc., that does not conduct electricity. It only allowed, it only allowed or permit electrostatic field on needs. That is what it does. It only permits electrostatic field or electrostatic force in needs. So, in that case, if you have heard about dielectric or whatever thing pertaining dielectric, it, it, it is a material or a medium or a vacuum that can only permit electrostatic field within it. It does not conduct electricity. It only permits electrostatic field within it. And the electrostatic that it permits is called a voltage. Because voltage is electrostatic. It is always constant. So, but can sustain an electric field. Can sustain an electric field. Dielectric are used in capacitors. I have already treated some of this in previous video, but I want to mix it up and explain it much more better for you to understand it now. So in that case, what can sustain an electric field? Do you know what you mean by it sustains? It means it can sustain electric field. That does not mean that it will permit electric field. It only sustains it, but it does not permit it. So dielectric are used in capacitors, which we know. We are discussing it is under capacitor. Now, between adjacent wires in a cable, it can also use an adjacent wire in a cable. And we have various types of cable, which I haven't mentioned. But in this case, we are concentrating on capacitors. For sure. So in that case, what I'm trying to explain here is, is a medium or a substance that can sustain electrostatic field, electrostatic field within it. That is what I want you to understand that that is the main or that is the, the definition of di, uh, of um, dielectric. So now we are straight to uh, dielectric constant. Now, in this dielectric constant, it's all about capacitor throughout. So, in that case, I said dielectric constant is the ratio, is the ratio of the capacitance of a capacitor. Is the ratio of the capacitance of a capacitor with the given material as dielectric. Remember, is the ratio, and you know anything that involves ratio, that is, the ratio will determine the capability of what you are about to do. The ratio of what you want to build determine. For instance, if you want to build or you want to mold block, the ratio, if it is um, sand, four way by row, then what bag was meant? That is, it is called ratio 4 to 1, all depending on personal choices, how effective you want it to be. So what I'm trying to explain here is, is because ratio has been involved in this, in the capacitor, in the capacitance of a capacitor. So that is why I am using a cement. If you are to mode block, I, I am using cement and sand to give you as an illustration, as an example for you to understand what I mean by ratio. Because if, if, if another person decides to use ratio 2 to 1, that is for the person. He, he or she wants the block to be more efficient or more strong enough. If the other person decides to use ratio 4 to 1, all depending on a individual. So in that case, what I'm trying to explain here is, in that electric constant, what matters is the ratio that that individual uses 
a capacitance of a capacitor with the given material as dielectric. So in that case, to, to, to the, the same capacitance of the capacitor with, with vacuum or air as the dielectric. Just what I explained here, this one is just to, to summarize it all. The ratio that I explained is as simple as that. Okay, let's say if we are, uh, they are building an upstairs and uh, you were asked to miss chipping, uh, two wheelbarrow of chipping, uh, four wheelbarrow of sand, and one bag of cement. That is the ratio. It, it, it means ratio 2 to 4 in 1. That ratio 2 to 4 in 1 all is the individual test of fit. What they want it. So in this case, what I'm trying to explain here is in capacitor. In capacitor being in terms of dielectric constant is the ratio. The everything that we summarize here is the ratio, the quantity being the ratio that you determine to use that will give you exactly what you want. So that is what I mean by that. So in that case, substances with a low dielectric constant include a perfect vacuum, dry gas, and most pure dry gases such as helium and nitrogen. In this case, here is explaining, I am explaining here now, is there are also a perfect vacuum, there are also a dry gases, which there, there are also a dry gases which involve helium and nitrogen, which also we use it in capacitor. So in that case, they are low, that is, a substance is with a low dielectric. All these ones are low dielectric constants. They are low in that electric constant, if include the perfect vacuum. So in that case, my explanation here is this. This perfect vacuum, dry air, and perfect, uh, and the most pure dry gases, such as helium and nitrogen, they are under low dielectric constant. In case if you are to ask the, the low and the high dielectric constant, always know that all these things that I mentioned are under low die, and dielectric constant. So in that case now, the dielectric constant of a vacuum is defined as 1. The dielectric constant at a vacuum is defined as 1. That of air is very close to 1. That of air is very close to 1. It's not that air is 1, but vacuum is defined as 1. It means vacuum is 1, but the but the that of air is very close to one, does not mean that it is one. And other materials have values, speci values specified in relation to air or vacuum. Other material under that electric constant, they are specified related between vacuum and gas. The one that is one and the one that is close to one. All other materials are also related to it. So in that case, the dielectric constant of a material also called the permittivity of material. Remember, if you cannot call it dielectric, you can also call it permittivity of a material. Permittivity of, the, of a material which which it represents the ability of a material to concentrate electrostatic lines or flux. You understand what I mean? It, is, it represents the ability of a material to concentrate 
electrostatic lines or floors. Electrostatic line of floors, which I have already said this before, this electrostatic, it represents the voltage, just as I said, because voltage is electrostatic. It's always constant. It remains where it is. So in that case, that is the ability of a material to concentrate. It's always concentrating on the type of voltage that is coming on the line of flux because that is where you, would, you can determine the kind of voltage that can be used in each of the capacitors or uh, each of the, the capacitor because the ability of the material and you know what ability means that the, uh, the strength of the material is to concentrate it represents the strength of the material to concentrate electrostatic lines of force so in this case what I'm trying to explain here is this if you cannot call constant if you cannot call dielectric constant you can also call it permissivity so in that case, I would like to stop here for today. And please, if you like my video, subscribe to my channel, comment, and like. See you next week. Thank you once again for watching my video.